Well, Josh, I mentioned on the show earlier in the week, big time festivities, well over 600 people at the Macon City Auditorium, really do it first class. The event had already begun on Friday. They had a golf outing, gave them their jackets, had a little banquet for them, just the members and their families, had a fan fest at the Hall of Fame on Saturday where the fans could come. A lot of them wanted to see Josh Schmoltz. And, uh, but we wanted to see Tracy Hamm. <laughs> and we wanted to finally get somebody into the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. That's right. From Georgia Southern. They had a chance to talk with Tracy. Let's get out and see how that went. This is certainly a, a great honor, not only for me and my family, but for the Georgia Southern community. Uh, we're just thrilled to death that we would be selected. It's such a tough process. There's so many people who deserve to be in here. There's so many people who will be in here. And to be picked with this class is just a special occasion. Well, it's not the first time I will be the first for something for Georgia Southern, so why, why not be the trailblazers for this? Um, I'm, I'm always um, very proud to be able to be in the the forefront for Georgia Southern. It, our relationship is just a lifelong relationship. Um, I tell you, there's so many great athletes coming out of Georgia Southern. So many have come out of Georgia Southern, and I'm sure I'm just the first of many that will be inducted into this Hall of Fame. Well, certainly, when, you, when the group was put together and you were in the midst of doing the work, the practicing, the games, you never really under, fully understand what's being accomplished. I think until you pull back, until your years are done, and you look back, now, you know, being 48, yes, I'm 48, Statesboro. So some more people getting older than me, uh, 48. If Tracy's 48, that means that we're growing gracefully old together. So, but that whole group, when we look back and we looked at that, it really was a foundation being built. And I think we built the correct foundation that future championships grew off of. We look for more championships to be come out of Statesboro, not only in football, but in other sports. But what we really were trying to do is just build a solid foundation so that as the school grew, that it can withstand um, all the trials and tribulations come off building a new program. Um, certainly with Dr. Lick being here, I've never gotten a chance publicly to thank Dr. Lick uh, because looking back over the history, I understand the faculty senate actually declined football and he had to override them. And so, you know, with a guy, he's a dreamer. You know, I'm just glad that he didn't let his dream die. When we think back to the days there in 84, we were close. Very close. Five, we still didn't know what was going on, and we're in the playoffs, and everything just happens. We're in Tacoma, Washington. Yeah. Uh, the real story behind the second half of that football game, did they really just tell you to go at No, clearly Paul still was in control of the play calling, okay? okay? Paul Johnson never ringless the play calling. Right. Um, I think the game really, what basically we just had to loosen the defense up. We knew we were behind. Uh, the key was offensively, we, I thought we were playing well. We just weren't putting the ball in the end zone. Uh, but when we open up the different throwing, you know, that run and shoot offensive receiver set, you really could get four receivers down the field instantly. I don't think Furman thought that we could maintain a, an efficient passing attack that would threaten the game at all. And we were able to get people open. We were able to protect up front. And then they still had to be concerned about the option because after Gerald took the long run on the pitch, from the option, it was just, you know, we were so versatile and we had so many good athletes. Right. In 1986, you're the one that reassured me. I know you probably remember this, but we, of course, did interviews every week. Yes. You know, before the Arkansas State game, you told me, Nate, don't worry about this one. Yeah, we were, yeah, I, we were real comfortable with our position. One, we were all seniors. There was no way we was going to let somebody beat us our last game at Georgia Southern. Arkansas State had a fine football team, a fine coach. Um, I thought they underestimated us. Not that we underestimated them, they underestimated us and our ability to play the game in pressure situation because we felt like that we would put enough pressure on them to score, play in and play out, that we didn't think they can stand, withstand that type of pressure because they'd never seen it. And we had seen by everything you can see as a group, as a group of athletes, as, as a team, we had seen about everything you can see, you know, we, I mean, from the Middle Tennessee State battles, you know, to the Northern Iowa, to Reno, Nevada, Reno, we had seen everything you can throw at this group, and we were so comfortable as a group, and we were so confident in each other. One final thing that people may not realize, you briefly came back to Georgia Southern as an assistant coach when Paul Johnson got there, and you did find a running back in Florida <laughs> before you left, isn't that true? That is true, that is true. I had an opportunity to come back. Paul invited me uh, on his staff, and I was think, considering I was retired from the CFL. I was going to hang up the cleats, and the CFL called me back. But during that period I was with in the recruiting period, I recruited Adrian Peterson. And, but the, the thing about Adrian, Adrian and I went to the same high school. My brother played 
high school sports with Adrian's dad, so there was some connection there. So Adrian Peterson certainly is a guy that we would anticipate in the future um, coming this way as well, getting into the hall. So I'm just the first to admit, I just really appreciate the community of Statesboro. We, Georgia Southern University, uh, in, in the surrounding areas, because it's, it took the surrounding areas, not only the Statesboro community, but the surrounding areas as well. Well, Nate, always good to see Tracy. And of course, he's been uh, in town quite a bit. Yes. At the basketball games. Yes. With Tracy Jr. Thought he revealed a few things in the in some of the questions I asked that you probably haven't heard asked. That's right. Too many other places. You, you know the questions to hit him with. Well, there's not many of us that were around. <laughs> that I, you know, he says to me, you know, we hadn't done many interviews really since I retired, right? Uh, since both of us retired. That's <laughs> not, but we'll be happy to talk. Listen, great guy. What an ambassador yeah. for Georgia Southern. All right, we're back with some final thoughts in just a moment on Upon Further Review.